Greetings, it's time for our monthly inflation update. And in this month's inflation update, we return to my measurement matrix of a multidimensional assessment of inflation. And this is the most holistic, comprehensive, and unriggable methodology through which to judge inflation. Longtime viewers are familiar with this, but if you're new here, I require these three measurements of inflation to all be above 3% before we say inflation is higher than optimal. This would still represent optimal inflation because if inflation is too far below this level, then not only are we at risk of deflation, which causes debt defaults and so forth, but technological innovation also uses inflation as fuel and therefore assessing all the trade-offs against each other. This is the optimal level of inflation for the United States and for any advanced economy. And that is the US CPI's compound annual growth rate should be 3% or lower. The Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, the most important measurement of all of these three, should be 3% or lower. And the 10-year yield of the U.S. Treasury note should be 3% or lower. And if all three of these are above 3%, then inflation is higher than optimal. And that means that money printing should be paused until we're in a situation where some of these three are below 3% again. Also, this is convenient symmetry as well. So let us look at the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index and the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield first, returning to the U.S. CPI at the end. Goldman Sachs Commodity Index from the S&P website, which will be in the description box below, of course. 10-year growth rate is minus 0.46%. Minus. It is in deflation. It is negative. Despite the fact that oil has risen from $50 a barrel to $80 a barrel, and for reasons that have nothing to do with monetary creation and central bank monetary action, but rather the war between Russia and Ukraine, as well as the Biden administration in the U.S. obstructing fracking and domestic oil production. That is why oil prices have risen. Otherwise, this would be an even more deflation, but it is still at minus 0.46%. And the reason this is the most important measurement is because it is, number one, traded worldwide, this is a composite of all of these commodities that are traded worldwide. Gold, oil, natural gas, silver, you name it. The worldwide prices. And it is traded on a free market. So worldwide pricing and free market trading. And therefore all the narratives about how the inflation rate is understated and so forth are debunked by the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index because it is a composite of freely traded commodities, including those priced worldwide. Remember, a lot of people who say inflation is high happen to be in the United States, and they seem to think that the United States is the only country in the world as well. Now we go to the next measurement, the U.S. Treasury yield. 10-year U.S. Treasury yield, and it's at 3.522%. So it is above 3%. But notice how it has trouble going much higher than this. Whenever it goes to 4%, that is actually very difficult to sustain, and it dips back down. And it was below 3% for most of the last five years. This is a five-year chart window. But now it's above 3%, mainly because the Federal Reserve has raised the Fed funds rate above this, creating an inverted yield curve, which I talk about in other videos on this channel. If you were to go back to the 1970s and 80s, this 10-year yield was much, much, much above 3.52%. So this is very low by historical standards, but I say that if it is above this very low bar of 3%, then it is higher than the level that I describe in my multi-dimensional inflation assessment. And now we go to the final measurement, which is the 10-year compound annual growth rate of the U.S. CPI. This is the Bureau of Labor Statistics website of the United States, bls.gov, which is in the description box below. And this is the CPI calculation over the last 10 years plus. And to get the 10-year compound annual growth rate, you have to take this most recent number, 302, and then divide that by the number 10 years prior, 232, and that gives you the 10-year inflation rate. And the one-tenth root of that gives you the 10-year compound annual growth rate of this period. So I'll show you what the results for that is. Suffice it to say it's 2.7% and therefore below 3%. And as you can see, despite the hysterical inflation narrative in the media, the one-month percentage change has fallen back down substantially, as has the two-month percentage change, the three-month percentage change, the six-month percentage change, 
and even the longest term window, the 12 month percentage change is falling just as quickly as it rose. It is not all the way back down to this low level yet, but the average of this is clearly well below 3%, and a high peak like this has to be viewed in the context of a near deflationary period like this as well, and these two cancel each other out. Therefore, the 10 year moving average is what is important here. But there's another way to look at this, which is that table that I have shown in recent months, so let's go there. So for those of you who are familiar with this table, I take the US CPI in all of those snapshot windows that we just saw. One month, two months, three months, six months, one year, two years, three years, five years, and 10 years, and annualize each of those readings. So if a one month reading was just 0.1%, we take that to the 12th power. A two month reading has to be taken to the sixth power to get an annualized rate. A three month has to be taken to the fourth power and so on. And for time windows longer than one year, we do the same type of exponential except that it is a fraction. So two years you take the square root, five years you take one fifth, 10 years you take one tenth. And as you can see, the 10 year compound annual growth rate is 2.7% because there was 30.2% inflation over 10 years. Therefore, per year, the average of that is 2.7%. So you have the five year, three year, and two year windows accordingly. The one year CPI inflation rate is 5.0%, but it's been falling quickly as we saw. This peaked at 9% for a very short time, and now it's falling as fast as it rose. And a bunch of very ignorant commenters have shown up here in the past to say only the one year window matters. Time windows longer than one year and time windows shorter than one year don't matter at all, which is crazy. These are people who before the 20th century would have insisted that the earth is flat simply because they cannot see the sphere curvature of the earth's surface by standing on the ground. And the recent month periods are more volatile because a certain month could be 0.1% like the most recent reading. The next month could be higher. So this will move around a lot, but the general trend is back down to lower inflation as well. So contrary to the narrative, inflation is falling quickly in even the US CPI. So now we go back to my matrix for an assessment of all the measurements we looked at. So we looked at the US CPI 10 year compound annual growth rate, the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index 10 year compound annual growth rate, again, the most important and comprehensive and international measure of them all, and the 10 year US Treasury yield. And what is the answer? As we saw, the US CPI is 2.7%, so still below 3%, and it's having a lot of trouble getting above 3%. Goldman Sachs Commodity Index is in deflation. It is far, far below 3%. This is a very volatile measurement, even at the 10 year compound annual growth rate level, but it's still far, far below 3%. And the only one of the three that was above 3% was the 10 year US Treasury yield, 3.52%. So only one of these three measurements is above 3%, and therefore, no, inflation is not high. I don't care what anyone says. People who actually look at data can see that inflation is not high and is not even at the optimal level. A lot of people want to debate via anecdote, and we will look again at Kartik's law of inflation to have some fun at the expense of those people. And yes, the word expense is appropriate because they believe they're overpaying for everything because they've convinced themselves that hyperinflation has been going on for the last century. So a reminder of that, Kartik's law of inflation which is something you can learn about in detail in this video up here in the upper right hand corner. But just for a quick recap, the longer any internet discussion about any topic continues, the probability of someone making a comment about inflation being a much greater crisis in modern society than it is approaches 100%. Furthermore, this mention will usually emerge before Godwin's law is fulfilled. Think about that. And the various categories of false statements people will make in order to scare everyone about inflation and to be in a pessimistic, data deficient, victim mentality mode are these. So in that video that I just linked in the tile above, you can look at all seven of these. And this is why I often say conservatives and libertarians have in fact lost their mind on the subject of inflation. They're just as obsessed with inflation without evidence of such as environmentalists are obsessed with climate change or race agitators are obsessed with pretending that racism in the United States is much worse than it is. Or radical feminists are obsessed with claiming that the patriarchy is something that is destroying all of society. 
society. Conservatives and libertarians used to be more reality-based in the United States, but that is becoming less and less true because they too have become infected by the social media method of thinking, and therefore they have lost their minds on the subject of inflation. And remember Karthik's law of inflation because as the future progresses and money printing keeps rising exponentially, some people are never going to give up on this, even at the technological singularity, there will be the last few conservatives and libertarians saying that we've had 200 years of hyperinflation, therefore we are poorer today than we were 200 years ago. If you like this type of content, then I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, and thank you very much for watching.